Well, good morning. I welcome you today to Olive Branch Baptist Church. Today is Palm Sunday. Today will be a celebration of music and of drama and of scripture reading. And it will be a day where we will remember Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem and also his crucifixion and his burial. And it will be a wonderful way to begin Holy Week, the week that we remember the events from this Sunday of triumphal entry till Jesus' crucifixion on Friday. And then we'll gather next Sunday on Easter Sunday to celebrate his resurrection. And let me remind you, like this is a special time, next week also will be a special time. There will be no Sunday school next week either, no 9 o'clock service. The first thing we'll do is meet in the cemetery at 10 o'clock for a resurrection service. And then we'll move in here into the sanctuary, or the CLC. It's been our sanctuary, hasn't it? Uh, and we'll, that service will start at 1030 next Sunday. So if you're not coming to the cemetery, we'll start at 1030. If you are coming to the cemetery, 10 o'clock. That will be our time next Sunday. Only one other announcement. Uh, we are ready to start our nursery, our toddler care. We want to start it as soon as possible. So we need your help. We need your input in the bulletin today, there is a survey. The surveys are also on the back table. So please, there's only two questions. You can't have any easier than that. And they're yes and no questions. Will you help in the nursery? Yes or no? And give us your name, because we'll need that. And then we're also hoping to hire some folks to assist our volunteers. So yes or no, do you think that's a good idea? That's it, two questions. And please fill that out. Uh, put it on the back table, give it to me, stuff it in the offering box. Somehow or other, uh, let us have that, please. Those are the only announcements for this morning. I am going to say a prayer for God's blessing upon our service, and then we are going to begin, and we are going to have a wonderful time. I encourage you to celebrate with joy. I encourage you to remember, and even if you can imagine what it was like, that first Palm Sunday with the crowds, the palm branches, Jesus, the disciples, the crowd that had come with Jesus from Galilee, coming in to Jerusalem. They were clueless of what was just about to happen in a few short days. That day for them was one to celebrate a king to celebrate a possible Messiah that would overturn Romans and reestablish a kingdom. But the Lord knew it was the beginning of his road to the cross, his death for us to pay for our sins and his resurrection to life to conquer death and bring eternal life. Remember that. Celebrate that this morning. Heavenly Father, we are thankful that we are gathered here this morning to remember and to celebrate. And I pray this morning, Lord, that you would take away all distractions. And I pray, Lord, that our focus this morning would be on the joy of what you have done for us and the joy that we have now in a new life. Lord, I pray that you would bless each part of the service that it would be meaningful and that it would bring blessing and it would bring honor and glory to you. And I pray all of this, Jesus, in your precious name. Amen. This is from Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. And all who fear God say, His love endures forever. With the Lord on our side, what can we fear? What can humankind do? We shall triumph over those who surround us. And stand in confidence in the Lord our God. 
The Lord is our strength and our might. The Lord has become our salvation. Hosanna to God. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna to God. Hosanna in the highest. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with a colt by her side. Untie them and bring them to me at once. If anyone asks, tell them the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to feel what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and placed the coat, placed the cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds went ahead of him, and those that followed shouted. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? Jesus entered the temple area and drove, drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, my house will be called a house of prayer. You have made it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and Jesus healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did, and the children shouted in the temple area, they were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? Yes. Haven't you read? From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise. Jesus left them and went out of the city to Bethany, where he spent the night.
We don't usually bring animals to church with us, but this donkey insisted on coming with me today. He says he has quite the tale to tell us. The donkey says, wow, what a day I've had today. Won't you please tell us about it? The donkey says, it started when two strange guys came and took me away. I'm a young donkey and have never been far away from home. The donkey says, these guys led me outside the city where I met a man who was different from any man I've ever met before. He had the kindest eyes I've ever seen, and they looked sad, too. By the way, do you have a name, donkey? Yeah. The donkey says we can call him Jake. Do you have more to tell us? <laughs> the donkey says... Oh, sorry. Jake says, the two strangers helped this kind man to sit on my back. Nobody has ever ridden on my back before, so I started to jump around and toss him right off. But this man was different. I felt peaceful, and I just wanted to do whatever he wanted. Jake said he headed me along the main road into the city, and soon there were people everywhere. Everyone was shouting, Hosanna, and blessed he who comes in the name of the Lord. It was like this guy was a king on the way to being crowned. I wondered if this could be the Messiah. Jake says, then it came to me, Messiah, yes, didn't I remember my mother telling me about something that happened to her grandfather long ago? Mama said her mama told her about it. Jake thinks that a donkey carried the Messiah's mother to Bethlehem the very night he was born. She said the donkey told about seeing the baby Jesus being born, and then there were shepherds who came and told all about angels on the hillside, and they told them about baby Jesus. Jake says, wow, he chose just a little donkey like me to ride, but couldn't it be? Could it? I mean, I'm just a plain old donkey. Shouldn't a king be ridden riding a great stallion? Jake says we should pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for coming to us and for showing us your love. Bless these children and draw them closer to you every day. Jake says we can praise Jesus just like the people did on the road to Jerusalem. Let's shout Hosanna and praise Jesus too.
the shouts of Hosanna on Sunday that Jesus went into Jerusalem changed to shouts of crucify him on Friday. It's hard to imagine how a crowd could change their shouts in such opposite directions. But the crowd that followed Jesus into Jerusalem had followed him from Galilee. They had seen him do miracles. They had heard him teach. They believed, many of them, that he was the Messiah. And here was their king riding on a donkey into Jerusalem to claim his rightful throne. But there were others in Jerusalem, the religious leaders, those who lived in Jerusalem, who were less familiar with Jesus, and yet the religious leaders were all too familiar with him and were jealous of his power, jealous of his uh, um, influence over the people. Uh, They saw one who had not been trained as they had been, one who, in their opinion, blasphemed God because he claimed to be God. They had a different plan for the Lord. Their plan was to trap him, to execute him, to put an end to his life and his ministry. They found an opportunity that week because they were going to wait until after the Passover. There was no reason to uh, cause a stir during Passover. This is the most holiest time of their year. They wanted all the people coming to Jerusalem to enjoy the Passover, return home, and then they would find a way to kill Jesus. But one of Jesus' own, Judas, came to them and said that he would give them a way to betray and to capture Jesus. He told them where they met He told them about a sign, how he would kiss, how they could know the one to arrest. And so now we are going to have several readers come and read this account from the Gospel of John. From that moment in the garden to the moment of Jesus' burial in the tomb. This morning we'll have readers read the scripture will have music that also reflects the truth of God's word. And we have in front of us candles. Candles that represent the life of Jesus. And you'll notice as each scripture is read, a candle will be extinguished, signifying that the end is closer and closer, that his death is nearer. At the end of the service, the last candle will be extinguished. There'll be one last reading. There'll be one last song and a final benediction. And I encourage you to leave today in silence. I know that's unusual, even during a pandemic when we're not supposed to hug or talk to each other. But I want you to to leave today just simply in silence. You need to talk, want to talk, do it outside of our worship place today. And this is the reason. Today we will end our service with Jesus' burial. The low point for those who followed him. For they had come in singing Hosanna and shouting it. And the disciples were expecting something big. But on Friday... Their Jesus, their rabbi, their teacher, their Messiah was in a tomb. And they were shocked and devastated and hiding and grieving and wondering if they had made a huge mistake and it all was wrong. That emotion is not one of joy. That's one of somberness. And that's why we will leave in somberness. But we'll return next Sunday 
with joy. So that's how our service will continue and end. And I encourage you to listen carefully to the scripture as is read. This account of Jesus' passion, of his love for us, of how John says earlier in his gospel, this is how Jesus showed his love. By dying for our sin. It begins in John chapter 18, verses 1 through 11. After Jesus said these things, he went out with his disciples across the Kindred Valley where there was a garden. And he and his disciples went into it. Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas took a company of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing everything that was about to happen to him, went out and said to them, Who is it that you are seeking? Jesus of Nazareth, they answered. I am he, Jesus told them. Judas, who betrayed him, was also standing with them. When Jesus told them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Then he asked them again, Who is it that you are seeking? Jesus of Nazareth. They said, I told you, I am he. So if you're looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the words that he had said, I have not lost one of those you have given me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. At that, Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword away. Am I not to drink the cup the Father has given me? be reading from John 18 verses 12 through 14. Then the detachment of troops and their officers and the officers of the Jews went out and arrested Jesus and bound him. And they led him away to Annas first, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest of that year. 
Now it was Caiaphas who advised the Jews that it was expedient for one man to die for the people. John 18, 15 through 18. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus. Because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went in with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard. But Peter had to wait outside at the door. The other disciple who was known to the high priest came back, spoke to the servant girl on duty there, and brought Peter in. You aren't one of this man's disciples too, are you? She asked Peter. He replied, I am not. It was cold, and the servants and officials stood around a fire they had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. The high priest questioned Jesus, continuing reading from the book of John, chapter 18, verses 19 through 24. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his, his disciples and his teachings. Jesus answered them, I have spoken openly in the world, and I've always taught in the synagogues and in the temples. Where all Jews came together, I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said these things, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If that's what I said is wrong, bear witness about the wrong. But if what I said was right, why do you smite, strike me? And I then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Do you feel the world is broken? You do. Do you feel the shadows deepen? You do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? You 
25 through 27. As Simon Peter stood warming himself, he, he was asked, you are not one of the disciples, are you? He denied it saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the olive grove? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, a rooster began to crow.
John 18, 28 through 32. Then they took Jesus from Caphias to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind can see what he's prepared for us. But on the cross, once and for all, he showed the world a glimpse of his great glory he is a love displayed grace and justice now collide he is a ransom paid in flesh and blood alive he is kingdom come and he is the one great miracle shining like the sun love displayed for all. Come taste and see, our King is good. All that we need, He freely gives to us and on the cross. Once and for all, he showed the world our God will not be conquered. He is a love displayed. Grace and justice now collide. He is a ransom paid. In flesh and blood alive, He is kingdom come. Shining like the sun, He is a love display for all. Love display for all. And when they lifted Jesus high above. Cross, he died upon the cross, he died. And when they lifted Jesus high upon the cross, he died upon the cross, he died. But now we God, he is alive. He is a love displayed. Grace and justice now collide. He is a ransom paid. In flesh and blood alive, he is kingdom come. And he's the one great miracle. Shining like the 
sun. He is a love display for all. He is a love display. Grace and justice now collide. He is a ransom pain. In flesh and blood alive. He is kingdom come. And he is the one great miracle. Shining like the sun, He is a love display for all. Love display for all. He is a love display for all. Love display. For I'm reading from the 18th chapter of John, verses 33 through 38. Pilate then went back inside the palace and summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea? Jesus asked. Or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it you've done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You're a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone is on the side of the truth that listens to me. Well, what is truth? retorted Pilate. With this, he went out again to the, to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him.
bring its scenes before me. Help me walk from day to day with its shadows o'er me. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, still my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. In the cross I watch and wait, John 18, 39 through 40. But you have a custom of asking me to release one prisoner each year at Passover. Would you like me to release the king of the Jews? But they shouted back, no, not this man. We want Barabbas. John 19, verses 1 through 11. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him in the face. Once more, Pilate, came out and said to the Jews, look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and a purple robe, Pilate said to them, here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify, crucify. But Pilate answered, you take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jews insisted, we have a law. And according to that law, he must die. Because he claimed to be the son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid. He went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? He asked Jesus, but Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me, Pilate said? Don't you realize that I have the power to free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered, you would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin.
red cross stained with blood so divine a wondrous beauty I see for twas on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me so I'll never see all of the broken cross till my trophy is at last I lay down I will play Reading 10 is from John chapter 19, verses 12 through 16. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jews kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at a place known as the Stone Pavement, which in Aramaic is Gabbatha. It was the day of preparation of Passover week, about the sixth hour. Here's your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king, Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priest answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. John chapter 19, verses 17 through 22. And he went out, bearing his own cross, to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written.
John 19, 23 through 24. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled, which said, they divided my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. So this is what the soldiers did. Twenty-five through 27. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour that disciple took her into his home. I am thirsty. There was a jar of vinegar there, so the soldiers soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on the branch of a hyssop tree plant, and lifted it to Jesus' mouth. When Jesus tasted the vinegar, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and died. Crucified, my Lord. Were 
Chapter 19, 31 through 37. Now it was the day of the preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus, and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that you may also believe. These things happened so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. In Jerusalem that day The soldiers tried to clear the narrow street But the crowd pressed in to see The man condemned to die on Calvary He was bleeding from a beating there were stripes upon his back And he wore a crown of thorns upon his head And he bore with every step The scorn of those who cried out for his death Down the Via Dolorosa Called the way of suffering Christ a King But he chose to walk that road Out of his love for you and me Down the Via Dolorosa All the way to Calvary Yeah. 
Por la vida dolorosa, triste de en Jerusalén, los soldados le abrían paso a Jesús. Mas la gente se acercaba para ver a quien llevaba aquella cruz. Por la vida dolorosa, la vida del dolor como deja vino Cristo Rey Señor y fue Él quien quiso ir por su amor por ti por mí por la vida dolorosa al Calvario y a Morir. The blood that would cleanse the souls of all men made its way to the heart of Jerusalem. Down the Via Dolorosa, all the way of suffering. All the way to Calvary. John 19, 38 through 42. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for a fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there.
the pain written on your face bearing the awesome weight of sin every bitter thought every evil deed grinding your blood stained brow now the daylight flees now the ground beneath quakes as its maker bows his head curtain torn in two dead are raised to life finish the victory cry this the power of the cross Christ became sin for us took the We have heard a story read, but it's more than a story. John said he wrote these things so that we might believe. That was the whole purpose John wrote his gospel and told us this story of Jesus' passion, his suffering, his death, and his burial, so that we might believe. So this morning, as you have heard the story, do you believe? Do you believe that as the scripture teaches us, we are sinners in thought and in deed, and death is our penalty, and eternal separation from God is our destiny? Do you believe that Jesus loved us so much that he died on the cross in our place to forgive our sins? Do you believe that he rose again from the dead and that he is alive today? Do you believe that he gives eternal life to any who put faith in him? 
If you believe, then you have eternal life. Your sins are forgiven. God is your father, Jesus your brother. You're guided by the Holy Spirit and eternity in heaven with the Lord awaits you. But if you do not believe, now is the time. Believe. John wrote it. We read it. And we told it again in song so that you would believe and in believing have eternal life. As we've heard the story, it's the story of Jesus's love. We call it his passion. As he told Pilate, this was the reason that he came. He came to die. He came to redeem. He came to to save. It was his love for us. Do you love in return? The story is not meant just to move us emotionally. The story isn't meant just for us to try to imagine the suffering of Christ, the beating that he took, the physical anguish, the emotional anguish separated from the Father when he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's not why the love and the passion is there to just move us emotionally. It's for us to respond as believers in love. And Jesus made it simple. He said, if you love me, you will obey my command." can't be any more simple than that. Jesus didn't say, if you love me, sing real loudly. If you love me, uh, write me a, a love note. He just said, simply obey my commands. So brothers and sisters, as you've heard the story, as you're reminded this week during Holy Week of the love of Christ, do you respond with love toward him, toward others, by obeying? So I'll close with a benediction, but before that, this challenge. Believe, for today is the day of salvation. Love, for God is commanded to love him with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength, and to love others as yourself. If you have not responded today with belief or responded with love, right now is the time to do so as we end our service and leave here in silence to return next week to celebrate with joy. And so may Jesus Christ, who for our sake became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you from this day forward.